Welcome to Lecture 12. This is on the integration between Oracle Forms and Oracle Reports. This is uh, a very common uh, thing to do to make use of running Oracle Reports because although Oracle Reports, um, this is another product in the developer tool set, they have their own parameter form which you can use and this would be like let's say you you want a, a report which is just a report of the particular students in a particular uh, instructor's courses or whatever um, then there would be a parameter for that instructor in, in the instructor's name in the parameter form on the Oracle report uh, but you may have quite a number of different reports with different uh, parameters or different sets of parameters like that and you can launch them all from the um, from an Oracle form and uh, there there are really a host of options here it depends on on how you're running your Oracle reports because the Oracle reports could be um, that could be something that that is you're generating an Acrobat file to it could be something that you're sending to the printer if you're delivering it across uh, the internet then they may be coming back um, on a web page depending on how you're making use of the application server you could have uh, like a link and the link you keep refreshing the page and it'll tell you whether the reports ready or not uh, actually internally uh, at Oracle they make use of this feature quite a lot on, on the web enabled reports so the basic objectives here, there, there are two ways of calling all reports or forms, and one is with run product, and another one is run report object, which is a bit tighter integration. And uh, with both of those, you have a choice of whether to pass parameters to the reports or not. So basically, Oracle Reports Developer is a tool which is used to design and build report modules. And these um, modules are dependent pretty much on SQL queries with formatting instructions. They're very similar to Forms Developer. There is um, there is a whole lot of different ways that you can go with, with creating a, a report. You can make use of a lot of um, a lot of the features that we've we've been using in Forms, such as PL SQL libraries and that kind of thing, are also used in, in reports, and they can. Um, um, they can also make use of procedures on the database side, on the report side to do calculations. There's really a lot of choices. And basically, um, the, the reports can also be generated to the screen. They can be sent to the printer. You can create an Acrobat file. You can even create, you know, like a delimited file that's a new file type, which is kind of like um, a file that you could then open in Excel or something like that. So. Many times you'll make use of this feature where you're going to take a, uh, a form as kind of your launch screen. At, at the same time, you should remember in our next chapter, we're going to go through menus. And the menu commands are very much the same as, as the, uh, the different commands that we used in chapter 11 when one form calls another form. And so the same applies to the, to the, uh, the report. So you may have a, a menu option which would run a, uh, a report. And you're pretty much going to make use of the same features that we have here. So run product is uh, a standard one, that the first one that they had uh, when they developed Oracle Forms uh, tool. And this is a flexible built-in that can be used to call any one of the three Oracle developer modules. You could launch uh, a whole nother form runtime session with a new MDI window, et cetera. Uh, you can launch reports, and you can launch Oracle graphics. And this is the basic syntax that's used when you use the run product. This is giving you a list of all the different parameters that you need. I think it'll be a little easier if I go over it with, um, with an actual example. So here's an example. We're running the product reports. The name of the file is course. Now remember that this file must be in the path. And the path is going to be um, something which is either set at the environment level of this Windows system. Um, you can also, there are a number of Oracle um, 
nodes in the registry, in the registry editor, you could go in and change those, like form, 60 path, oracle path. And basically, think of it this way. The, when you launch the run product, you're not giving the whole um, directory structure there. And it has to know where to find it. And if it's not in the path, it won't find it. And um, there's another workaround to that, too, which we'll cover in the, in the uh, menus lecture, which is the next lecture. Asynchronous, runtime. Runtime means we're using the form's runtime. File system means the report is in the file system. It's not in the database. The two null items here, this is uh, the first one is the parameter list from the, you saw on the last slide, and that means I'm running this, the course report without a parameter list. And then the second one is for display, which means I'm not displaying it, I'm just sending it to the printer. Or depending on how I've set up the defaults on the report, I could also have it default to go to uh, creating an Acrobat file or something like that. Um, now, the next thing which you can make use of is the run product object. Now, compared to run products, it's not quite as flexible, but it is more powerful. It has a much tighter integration between the calling form and the report module. Um, this is also a new feature which they've just added in recent versions of Oracle Forms, so you may find some of your seasoned developers not making use of it, but I, I think you'll find it's actually a lot easier to make use of. So what's important when you use the, um, this syntax, or, or this built-in rather, is that you, there is just one required form element, and that is you must have a report object. Now the report object is on the report node in the object navigator under the, uh, the module. Now the properties of the report object are very similar to the different parameters that you used in the run product build-in. Actually there are, there's a few more too. And here's just an example. I, I've kind of smashed those two together so you can't see the distinction. But I have um, a student report which I've created in the object navigator. And then if you look over on the right, you'll see that there are some of the properties. Now, um, I've actually put the whole path of the, of the report, um, although generally you, you would have it you know, included in the, uh, the path of the, of the PC. You can see the execution mode is runtime. The communication mode is asynchronous. Um, it's not based on a database block, the data source. And then these are a number of, of features to the uh, properties related to the report. I have a destination type, which is file, which means I want to create a file. And then I've given the exact location where I want to create the file. And this is going to be PDF, which means I'm creating an Acrobat file. So when you launch this report object, it will, it will do those. And here's an example of how I could, I could launch that. So uh, I have a, once again, this goes back to something which you're probably familiar with now, where there's like a database ID or a form ID for, these, for the different objects. And in order to launch the report, we actually have to launch it from the ID, not from the name of the object. So that's why the first thing we have to do is uh, the v rep obj ID is a variable which I'm going to populate with the report object ID number for course. So find report object is going to take the course, get the, the uh, ID for that, and put it into that variable. And now I can do the next one, which is um, another variable, which is really just the return that's coming from this, uh, um, this built-in. Some of the built-ins, they work this way, that even though they, they launch something, they also return something. So this is a run report object. And now I'm giving it the value, which is the ID of the course report, and I'm running it that way. Now here's another thing. Um, a lot of reports are parameterized, which means that they have, um, you can think of it as uh, different things that you're putting into the, the where clause of the SQL. I just want to see a list of students in Connecticut. I just want to see 
a list of instructors to teach a course which has a prerequisite. And so when you design the report in the SQL, you make use of parameters. And if you're running the report as a standalone, you'd have a parameter form, which is a component of the report. And that's where you would make your choice. And then when you run the report, you would, um, you would get that result set just related to that parameter. So it's a little bit different when you, when you create the, um, the form object and you're going to be passing parameters to the report. So the basic ideas here are pretty much the same as in our last chapter when we were launching a form based on um, uh, passing a parameter list to launch the second form. So you create the parameter list, you add parameters to the list, and then you recall the report with the parameter list. And you can use this both with run product and run report object. So here's an example of creating the parameter list. Uh, now actually it's a good idea to, to check whether the that parameter list is still existing in memory based on you know some other trigger or something you have done recently. So I'll do that on the next page. So basically I have a parameter list ID. I'm creating a parameter list of the name rep params and I'm assigning it um, by create parameter list built in for this name. I'm giving it a, a parameter list ID and then I'm populating the VP list ID. And now um, I'm actually getting the, the, the ID for that. What I'm going to do here, though, this is actually destroying the parameter list just in case it exists in, in um, memory. That's why I'm doing this if not ID null, which means, you know, if the ID isn't null, then destroy it. So this is something you may want to do first just to be sure that you're not having a, you know, it doesn't already exist in memory. If you have a very simple form and you only have one parameter list and you're launching it and then coming back, you may not have to do that. But it's just a good thing to keep in mind if you run into problems. That could be one of them that, that you haven't destroyed an existing parameter list of the same name. Now that I have the VP list ID, which is the parameter list ID, I can add parameters to it. The parameter P1, now if I have P1, that means that the report parameter has to have that exact same name, P1, and it has to be a text parameter. Um, so now, let's say uh, I was launching this from a form, then I may want the current item, let's say this was a student um, record, and I had a report based on the student, maybe a report which lists all his um, the money that he owes, his grades, a whole bunch of details. The only thing I need is, is a student ID to run that report. And so I've queried on the form. I've come up with that particular student. Once I get to that student, I have this button which launches the report. And that's why if, if it was taking like the student ID from the student block on the form, it's actually in this code right here, it's adding that, that value for the student ID as the value for P1, and it's giving that into the parameter list. Now when I run the report, here I'm using run product, I'm actually throwing that parameter list, and you can see that I'm running that parameter list with the, um, that parameter list now contains all the different parameters. You know, when you have reports, you could actually have a number of parameters, so that one is just um, that, you know, the last slide was like one example. So here's uh, two different ways of launching the report. The first example is run product. You can see that you have a lot more parameters there. The second one is a lot simpler. If you use the run report object, then you can um, just give the report object and the parameter list ID, and that's it. Now it's important to remember too, and you'll see this more in the demonstration, um, there are also methods to change the properties of the, of the report object in the form. And this would be if there are different uh, choices, you want to give them a, a choice to either send it to the printer or send it to create an Acrobat file or not. So what you will see in the uh, accompanying demonstration for this lecture is um, adding a trigger to 
uh, report file EX1201 to run a report. Now, don't worry, you don't have to know how to make a report right now. There are a few reports that have included um, on the CD, and so you can run those. And then uh, we'll show the difference between run product and run report object. And then, as usual, you'll complete the uh, assignment and the labs. You'll do um, both of those yourself. You'll get a firm understanding on it. And then you'll be ready to move on to our final chapter, 13, which is menus. Thank you.